क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फाइव इट्स इज टू बॉल्स ऑफ अन इक्वल मासेस मूविंग इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन विद इक्वल स्पीड्स कोलाइड इलास्टिकली देर आफ्टर दैवियर पार्टिकल इज ऑब्जर्व डेविएटेड फ्राम इट्स ओरिजिनल डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन ऑफ एन एंगल थर्टी डिग्री इन द लेबोरेटरी फ्रेम एंड दैट दैट एंगल इज सिक्सटी डिग्री इन द सेंटर ऑफ मास फ्रेम हाउ मैनी टाइम्स ऑफ द मास ऑफ द लाइटर बॉल इज द मास ऑफ द हैवियर बॉल सो दिस क्वेश्चन सेज अबाउट द कोलिजन ऑफ टू अन इक्वल मास पार्टिकल्स मूव द सेम स्पीड इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन कोलिजन इज इलास्टिक सो दे कंडीशन वन दैट इलास्टिक कोलिजन इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस एंड द डेविएशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अ लेबोरेटरी फ्रेम इज गिवन टू अस ऑफ द हैवियर पार्टिकल एंड ऑफ द सेम पार्टिकल द डेविएशन फ्रॉम द सेंटर ऑफ मास फ्रेम इज गिवन टू अस सो लेट्स कंसिडर आउट ऑफ द टू मास इज एम वन एंड एम टू एम वन इज मोर दैन एम टू लेट्स कंसिडर एम टू एज एम देन एम वन इज एक्स एम एक्स इज द फैक्टर बाई विच द हैवियर मास इज मोर एज कम्पेयर टू द लाइटर मास सो दिस एक्स वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट Now let's consider this figure. Before, just before the collision, this uh, m1 is moving here with u, m2 is moving in this direction with u, opposite direction, same speed. And after the collision, let's say this m1 is deviated uh, by an angle alpha, which is given to us from the same direction, uh, horizontal direction. So uh, this is the 30 degree, and v2 is going to move uh, in some another direction. Let's say this angle is gamma. This is just after the collision. So what we can have, we can have a linear momentum conservation. Along the x direction as well as along the y direction. So x direction you'll find uh, it's going to be like an initial x direction momentum, which is going to be m1 u minus m2 u is equal to m1 v1 cos alpha and plus m2 v2 cos gamma. Now m1 m2 can be placed over here. So, uh, along with this vertical component, uh, vertical direction linear momentum conservation. Initial vertical momentum was zero, so they must be compensating for each other. So its vertical component is going to be v1 sine alpha. It will have a v2 sine gamma. So we will have m1 v1 sine alpha is equal to m2 v2 sine gamma. Again, m1 m2 has been placed over here. Now these are the two equations. From in these two equations, we need to get rid of this gamma because in the equation neither gamma is given nor it is required. So what we can do, we can say that this uh, sine alpha could be placed here. Um, inside this cos 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 gamma, this is sine gamma basically. So gamma can be eliminated from the two. How we can do this? So let's consider this first one. M is getting cancelled out. It will be like x minus one if we take this uh, u common, and then here it will be like x v one cos alpha alpha is given plus v two cos gamma. Cos gamma could be written under root one minus sine square gamma because this is going to be written as under root cos square gamma. Cos square gamma could be written as One minus sine square gamma. You must be known. From this relation, if we cancel this m, sine gamma is basically x v one sine alpha divided by v two. So we can substitute the sine gamma over here. So it will be like uh, x minus one u is equal to x v one cos alpha whatever it was plus. It will be like one minus x square v one square sine square alpha divided by v two square. Then we can balance the denominator. So it's like v two square minus x square v one square sine square uh, alpha. Overall divided by v one uh, v two. So this v two and this v two will get cancelled out. So ultimately this will have a one equation which relates um, x, which is unknown. We need to find uh, u is also unknown. V one and v two these are other unknowns. Alpha is uh, something that is known to us. Now the idea is to get this v one and v two in terms of u. So in this we can think of v one and v two or something we need to find in place over here. So that's one equation, one condition, one equation, and this is coming using the linear momentum conservation. Now the collision is elastic. That means uh, coefficient of restitution must be one. Or we can think of uh, whatever the initial kinetic energy was that should be later on. So we can say initial and final kinetic energy has to be identical. Writing the kinetic energy is going to be easier here. So we can say it's like a half m1 u square plus half m2 u square must be equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. M1 m2 have been placed over here. So it reduces like x plus one u square taking u square common is equal to x v1 square plus v2 square. So that's second relation. Now using the first and second, what we can do we can uh, eliminate v2. So here it's v2 square 
and this is also v2 square so this v2 square can be substituted over here so this will be a relation in v1 only so let's do that it requires a little bit calculation we will do so so it's like uh, x minus 1 u so x minus 1 u let's bring this term this side so minus x v1 cos alpha let's square both sides so square of this must be equal to square of this that means square root will be cancelled out and there's going to be v2 square so in place of v2 we can write v2 square we can write uh, x plus 1 u square minus x v1 square so x plus 1 u square minus x v1 square this is in terms of in, in place of v2 square and whatever this was remaining it has to be there like minus x square v1 square sin square alpha now you'll find uh, that in this it seems to be very complex but yes it's uh, it has v1 and v1 can be calculated in terms of u so let's go for further simplification so let's square this if we square this we'll find x minus 1 whole square u square and then plus x square v1 square cos square alpha then minus 2 times these two product together so x x minus 1 u and v1 cos alpha so that's whole square expansion now this negative term we can bring this side so that will become plus x square v1 square sin square alpha and this will be left over right sides which is x plus 1 into uh, this uh, x plus 1 into u square minus x v1 square okay now you can assemble let's say these two underlying terms together put together so you will find x square v1 square is a common so sine square alpha plus cos square alpha will become 1 nevertheless alpha is known to us we can put over here so it will become uh, uh, you'll find this will be like uh, x square v1 square x square v1 square and there is an x v1 square here so we can i have brought this also this side left hand side so v1 square can be taken common then you'll find uh, it's going to be like x square plus x so x square plus x could be written as x x plus 1 into v1 square so this is coming using this term this term as well as this last term moreover there is this first term x minus 1 whole square u square so we can keep it and uh, we can also bring this term this side so minus x plus 1 into u square and there are this uh, multiplication term so we can ment maintain it as such is equal to 0 so this is a relation which has v1 and uh, u and x alpha is known to us furthermore we can go uh, for simplifications now how to what to do then after so if we uh, want x so we need to eliminate this v1 u and all that now there is one more information given that in laboratory frame uh, this was alpha that we have used in center of mass frame the deviation is beta now we know the velocity of one with respect to center of mass is going to be velocity of one minus velocity of center of mass so velocity of one will be velocity of center of mass plus velocity of one with respect to center of mass now you'll find velocity of center of mass is going to be horizontal because center was moving initially horizontal so this is going to be the velocity of center of mass and if we add the velocity of 1 with respect to center of mass which will be having angle beta as this is 60 degree so this will be indicating the velocity of 1 with respect to ground that means this v1 alpha so this angle is alpha so this triangular law of vector addition is going to be useful over here this is beta now you'll find this angle must be beta minus alpha because some of these two angles must be equal to the exterior angle right so beta minus alpha now beta is 60 alpha is 30 so this is going to be 30 degree this is also 30 degree now what about this entire angle this is going to be 180 minus beta and which is 60 degree so you can think of this is 120 degree anyway here we can use the uh, sine rule of triangle so that will be vcm divided by this angle so vcm divided by sine beta minus alpha is equal to v1 divided by sine of this angle which is 180 minus beta so it turned out to be vcm divided by sine 30 because this becomes 30 and this becomes sine 60 because sine 180 minus beta is equal to sine beta beta is 60 degrees so we can place over here basically we are getting v1 is equal to sine 60 divided by sine 30 vcm sine 60 divided by sine 30 is root 3 so this is v1 in terms of vcm what the vcm is going to be very simple uh, m1 v1 minus m2 uh, is going to like m1 u minus m2 u divided by m1 plus m2 m1 m2 can be written like this so vcm will turn out as x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 into u and if we multiply by root 3 that becomes v1 so this is the expression for v1 uh, there's a lot more uh, calculation so we need to carry with that no other option 
Now this V1 uh, which uh, we got here should be placed on this equation which we have found uh, found by using this energy uh, relation as well as the linear momentum conservation. So in this, let's put this V1 square. So V1 square is going to be three times this square. So X, X plus one, three times uh, the square of this, which is X minus one whole square divided by X plus one square and then U square. In the next term, it's like X minus one U square, whole square, U square. So that's there, that's there. This term is also there. Here was V1, V1 can be placed over here, from here, right? Now, one thing you can observe in this, U square can be taken common and canceled. C square is getting cancelled out. Now this term will have like 3x, x minus 1 whole square divided by x plus 1, 1x one plus 1 will getting cancelled out. Now this is uh, going to be, uh, since u square has been cancelled out, so that will be remaining as x minus 1 whole square. This is minus x plus 1 and then the minus you'll find 2 and 2 getting cancelled out, root 3, root 3 will make it 3, then x, then x minus 1 whole square divided by x plus 1 equal to 0. Then after what you can do, you can multiply by x plus 1 all together and expand it. So if you multiply by all together with this x plus 1, so it will be like 3x, x minus 1 whole square, and this is going to be like x minus 1 whole square into x plus 1 minus x plus 1 square minus 3x, x minus 1 whole square equal to 0. If you look carefully, this last term and this first term will get cancelled out. So you will have only these two terms, right? From here, we can take x plus 1 outside. So you'll find x minus 1 whole square minus x plus 1 equal to 0. Now, x has to be a positive number, right? And it cannot be a negative number. So this number will not be 0. That means this bracket has to be 0. So if you open it, you'll find it's like x square minus 2x plus 1 minus x minus 1 equal to 0. Then you find 1 is getting cancelled out, it turns out to be x square minus 3x equal to 0. That means x within bracket x minus 3 must be 0. That means x either should be 0 or should be 3. That means this x um, either should be 0 or should be 3. It could cannot be uh, 0 because otherwise uh, 1 mass will become 0. And we know this m1 is larger with this m2. So this has x has to be greater than 1. So for acceptability, x must be chosen as or accepted as 3. That means heavier ball must be three times heavier than the lighter ball. So x equal to three becomes our right response. Okay, thank you.